Hello, everybody, and welcome to our first uh, SQL Select webinar for beginners. The purpose of our today's session is to learn how to retrieve, or in other words, query data from the database. Um, we're going to start with our SELECT statement definition. So it's used to retrieve data from a database. The result is stored in the result table, also called a result set. For our today's session, I created the table. I called it customers. I entered the nine customer into my table, so it's a one through nine, and I keep the six columns of information per customer, which is ID, last name, first name, hire date, age, or social security number. Let's start. This is a select statement syntax we're going to be looking at, uh, and I want to point a couple things to you. Uh, SQL is a structured query language, so the order is extremely important, and the, uh, it should go in the SELECT FROM WHERE group by having an order by order. The square brackets stand for the optional keywords, and the, if you're going to pay attention, the only two things, the only two keywords are required um, are the SELECT and FROM. The minimum you should put in your SELECT statement to read an information, at least one column from at least one table. And um, SELECT, uh, SELECT actually specifies what data to retrieve and FROM finds where is it coming from. Is it frustrating? Um, <laughs> don't worry about it. So we will learn it row by row and hopefully by the end of this session you will feel you wouldn't look like that and you will feel much more confident. Let's look at the first two rows, which is a SELECT and FROM, and let's pay attention and learn how to do it. Uh, FROM should have at least uh, one table minimum of one table and have as many tables as it exists in the database separated by a comma. Each column, each column selected in the data in the select should point to the one of the tables that you specify in the from. In other words, the column names should be existing in one of the tables in the from clause. And as we just mentioned earlier, the select and from are the only two required uh, keywords in my SELECT statement. Let's start looking at the information and let's start with our first SELECT statement. We have nine rows back. What I did is I specified SELECT star from customers, which is the quickest way to show that I'm looking at all the columns in the customers table. And I got all the uh, of the uh, columns in the customer's table. Our requirement says that I should have a minimum of one column, and for example, I don't need all the columns in my tables, and I'm looking at the last name only of the employees working in my, um, who are my customers, and I can specify the minimum of one column, and as many column as exist, in the table customers. So in this way, uh, we just look at the first two rows of my select statement and we talked about that, um, let's cover it one more time. When I'm saying, saying select all, it's saying that it's selecting all columns. I can say select star from table, right? So I can do the select star from table customers when it's retrieving every single column, or I can select individual columns by separating it with a comma, and they should exist in my customer table. Now if you're going to look at the column age, you will see that there is a three records with the same um, age of the customer, which is a 23. It's record 1, 2, and 3. What if I want to show uh, the age of my customers listed 
just once. In other words, eliminate all the duplicate values in my select statement. For that, there is a specific reserved word distinct. And if you will pay attention, I have the total of nine rows. And when I'm saying distinct age, I'm showing uh, the system, I'm asking the database to retrieve every single value listed just once. So right now, let's go over it's something to remember. Select specifies what data to retrieve. From finds where is it coming from. From should have a minimum of one table and as many tables as you need. Each column in the select statement should come from the table specified in from, and select and from are only two required keywords in the select statement. My next um, uh, goal is, uh, in my case, actually in my case, let me quickly back to our data set, uh, in my case, for, the, um, for this exercise, I created the table with nine rows only. In real databases, uh, the tables are obviously much longer and you need to be able to sort it. How do I sort the results set? Uh, to sort the results set, there is a special command called order by and you specify there's many ways to sort the results set and if you're gonna pay attention, the order by and there is the ascending and descending order. Ascending order is the uh, default and you don't need to specify it. Uh, the system will automatically uh, sort it for you. Assume that you want to sort it in the ascending order, which means that it's gonna sort it from the smallest to the largest value. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, or A, B, C, D, etc. Descending order is a reverse order that's sorting it from the largest to the smallest value. For example, in my case, I want to sort it by last name. I sorted it by last name. If you will pay attention, it started from the B to S. I didn't put ascending, if I will put ascending, nothing will change, so the system will automatically assume that it's in ascending order. If I will put the descending order, the system will do it from largest to smallest. I can sort, if you're gonna look, I have the two Patels, and now I want to do the first name order. I am saying that you need to um, sort last name from s largest to smallest, but the first name from smallest to largest. Now if you're going to look at the Patel, you will see that the first name is sorted in the ascending order. My next goal is, I mean before that, we looked at the table as a whole. Right, so we looked at it as a whole table, we did the select star from customers, but what if we need the sum, a small portion of data? For example, remember how we were talking about that there's only uh, three records where the age um, is 23, and I want to see um, only those records where the age is 23. How do I do that? Uh, that's I need to do using a condition and it's a where clause. Let me use the conditions. Uh, many ways to use a condition, many operators, but today we're going to look at the three groups, a comparison group, a boolean group, and a little bit more complex group. Let's talk about one at a time. Comparison group um, is remove our order by. The one that we talked about is like we're talking about where h is equal 23, it's returned back the 23, where h is greater than 23, it's returned back only records that satisfy my condition when it's greater equal 23, that's a 23 including, where it's less than 23, 
there is nothing less when I'm saying less or equal to 23 to 23 etc so it's a comparison operator that let me choose the data using the comparison operators now the negative condition when I want everything except 23 this is in other words saying when it's not equal to 23 oops and that returned back five rows where age of the customer is not equal to 23. There is a two way uh, that to achieve the same goal, the two different syntaxes. I can uh, write it as an age is not equal to 23 or the different syntax will be this. It's the same result, but it's a different syntax. You can say where h is not equal to 23, or you can say where not h is equal to 23. Same result, different syntax. My next group of operators are Boolean operators and and or. What is the difference between and and or? To return rows, where it's like where's a more than one condition, you need to use the boolean operators and and or. Um, in my case, I'm looking at the first example where h is greater than 50 and last name is equal Patel. What I'm trying to say here is return back only those records where both conditions are true. I'm looking only at the customers with the first name Patel and who are older than 50 years old. Versus in my second example, I'm saying where H is equal to 23 or first name is equal to Anna, when I'm using the Boolean operator OR, I'm saying that it's either one of the conditions should be true or both conditions should be true for me to see the records. In other way, I'm saying that if the age of the customer is 23 years old, I want to see it, or his first name is Anna, I want to see that too. Let's look at my example and first name equal Amy. Okay, I'm saying here give me the group of customers whose name of whose age is 23 and whose first name is Amy. In other case, if I will say give me all the customers within the age of 23, which is a three rows, or the first name Peter, and he has a different age group, please give me the records back. My other operator, this is a boolean operator, my other operator to look at will be in operator and it's used to specify the multiple values. For example, I want to see the employees who are 23 years old, 31 years old, or 61 years old. Before that, I was doing it, oops, like this. So I was using the multiple OR and I was saying that give me all the customers whose age is 23 years old or 31 years old or 61 years old. Now knowing the IN operator I can combine it under one list in this form. So in other words, I'm telling the system to retrieve all the records from the customer's tables where age is within 23, 31, or 61. My next operator will be between operator. Between operator is used to select the range of data between the two values. In other words, if I will say give me the age group between 23 and 51. I want to see all employees, all customers in my company 
who are between the 23 years old and 51. I will use the between operator. Now I want you to look at the whole data set and pay attention that I have the one record, Michael Lee, and he has a null age. What is a null? Null is a missing or unknown value. How can I operate it? If it's unknown value, I cannot use a simple equal to. I'm using the special operator is null or is not null. In other words, I'm retrieving the record from my customer's table where age is equal to null or where age is not equal to null, is not null. Now you will see that there is only eight rows returned back and Michael Lee is not retrieved back. My next operator is like operator. It's very powerful. The like operator is uh, used when you want to search for a specific pattern, but you're not sure what the pattern is. In this case, you use a percent sign when to define the missing characters. For example, you know that part of your first name uh, contains um, has a N, lower N, but you don't know is it at the beginning of the first name, is it at the end of the first name, where is it located? In this case, you're gonna say first name, like, you use like because it's not equal to, it's not the exact a string is just like you're saying that I'm looking something like that, like, and then you say, for example, um, percent sign, percent sign. In my case, I am telling the system, I don't know what is before and what is at the end of the string. I want something that's contained lower n. And this is the first name that has the N in the different part of the string. Look at this example to be more clear. Where first name like none, it's telling the system that the first name should start with the upper N, AN, anything after that will work. Or where the first name is percent N, AN, it's like it doesn't matter where in the string none is located. Or you can say the undersign, underscore sign, and it's used to define only one missing character. In my case, if I will change it to the AN, I will see only three first name return back because it's only I'm telling I'm letting the system that you can skip only one character. Do you feel any better? Um, I hope, definitely hope so, and uh, please come to our next webinar to look at the more uh, specifics for the select statement.